All right, guys, welcome to the Talking Shit with B-Rag Podcast. How you guys all doing? Uh, we got a very special episode today. Uh, you guys finally get to see the man behind the podcast, uh, the producer, the guy that makes everything sound great and look amazing, uh, the one and only my cousin Keith. What's going on, buddy? How you doing, what bud? Up, what up, what up? Yeah, man, it's good to have you here. Um, so today we are going to do... Uh, I've, obviously, we're cousins. You know, we've known each other our entire lives. Our dads are brothers. Um, but being St. Patty's Day and everything else, I think it's perfect that we have this episode uh, and we talk about a little bit of mine and your uh, addictions, right? I think, I mean, yeah, we, we, we talked about it before. And when I asked you to come on the show to finally introduce you to everybody to get your face out there, because, I mean, you do a phenomenal job with the show. Appreciate that. Appreciate um, that. We both, we'll just say it, we both have addiction problems. It runs pretty deep in our family, and with it being St. Patty's Day, why the fuck not do it on the drunkest day of the year? Right, right. I was never driving <laughs> over. I'm like, oh, shit. Dude. Oh, be careful. Be careful. I'm, like, I'm not doing nothing. Yeah, right? I'm just driving so, all over. So I'm glad you said that. We literally, so my daughter had softball tryouts today, and um, we literally were like thinking, okay, we were there for two hours. And we left and we went to Stewart's and I'm like, man, I'm like, it's 430 on a Saturday and I haven't even had a beer yet. Like, what the <laughs> fuck, you know? And Lindsay's like, oh, you should just grab a pounder. Just like, you know, whatever. And I'm like, nah, nah, nah. Like something was telling me like not to drink. Because right, right. I was like, oh, I don't want to walk into the school and have them smell booze on me or whatever. Right. Sure as shit, dude. We leave all these. We get on to 5S mm-hmm. sobriety checkpoint. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, be careful. fuck, man. Fast, I was like, oh, fast. shit. And me and Lindsay looked at each other, and I'm just like, dude, like, how crazy is that? Like, the one time I say no to drinking, and this happens, and I'm stone sober, like, it, it was like a godsend. Like, the universe was looking out for me and was like, hey, you're making the right choice right now. Because later on, yeah, though. later on, in the, the dude, there were so, so many fucking, because I turned the mics down so I can barely hear you. Okay, um, right. So literally, dude, it was, there was probably no joke. I don't know. 10 to 13 cops, state troopers and locals. No shit. And we got waved through because I knew a few of them. Okay. The second okay. they saw me, I was just like, they're like, oh, he's good. Let him go. Let him go. And they're all looking at me, and I'm like all tatted up. My arms are hanging out the window, and I'm just like, hey, what's up, oh, fellas? Oh, yeah. I'm like, what's yeah, going yeah. on, guys? Hey, how you doing? Because, like, I, you know, I had nothing to worry about. Like, right, right. she was in the car. Lindsay was in the car. And it's just such a good feeling to not have to be scared of the police. Right. That anxiety when they used to pull you over, you're like, oh, shit. Like, I didn't do nothing wrong, but they're going to find something. Yeah, exactly. There's got to be something in here. You yeah, when you're not even mind. doing anything wrong. But you're still like just a regular traffic stop and you're just like, oh, shit, like what the fuck? Some, something's going to get me in trouble right now. All right, perfect. Oh, there we go. Now we're back. All right, we're back, guys. Yeah, Sorry. Sounds a lot better. Yeah, we yeah, had some technical difficulties better. there, some background noise, uh, and the microphones were way too fucking low. So at the beginning of this episode, if uh, it's a little hard to hear, bear with us. We fix it. Um, but yeah, so back to what I was saying, uh, we're going to dive into uh, mine and Keith's uh, uh, addictions, you know? Uh, it, it definitely runs heavy in our family for sure. Um, I don't know about you, but on in, in my situation, both sides, mom and dad. So it runs heavy with our dad's side, well, our dad's yeah, yeah. family, heavy. And then very, very. for sure with my mom's side, real heavy. Um, yeah, so uh, I mean... Take it away. Give 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 the audience a little a little background of Keith Crane a little bit, like how you grew up, where you grew up, the little a little bit of the the back history of Mr. Keith Crane, the producer of the show. I don't even know where to start. So raised in Herkimer. I'll say where you grew up, how many siblings you got. I mean, I know all these questions, but like, yeah, where you grew up, how many siblings you got, a little bit of like life shit with your mom and dad. Just tell them whatever you feel comfortable saying. Grew up in Herkimer. I got three sisters, one brother, two sisters younger than me, one older than me, and my brother is 19. I don't even, why are you asking me? He's your brother. <laughs> I have no idea. I've only <laughs> met him a handful of times. <laughs> um, 
I can literally probably count on both my hands how many times I've met your brother. Yeah. Because he's, he's not related to me. In. Yeah, that's right. Okay. He's not yeah, related so he's to me. So, yeah, he's, he's on right your right mom's side. Up, so, so, I've never, I mean, I know him. I know his name. I'm not going to say it, obviously. But, I mean, if we were out and out and about, I don't think I would even go up and say hi to him because it would probably scare the shit he out of him. <laughs> He'd be like, who's, he would know who I was, I think. Why is he talking to me? Yeah, but he would just be like, what the fuck? <laughs> but, yeah. Um, my parents split up when we were young. Um, that was always a back and forth thing. Yeah, I remember that shit. I used to spend the night at your house all the time when you guys lived on uh, Pleasant Ave yeah, and Herkimer. That was wild. I yeah. used to spend the night. Yeah. That was like I think that was like right when your parents were like it was like the end. Yeah, they it, were still. I mean, he they always like they didn't get divorced until ten years ago. Really? Like, legally divorced? Yeah, they were just like split and all that. Yeah, nothing was official. It might have been like, a little bit longer. No, yeah, come here, recommend. Maybe about 15 years ago. But it's that's still it because they still, were apart we, for a while. I think we all got out of high school. Like it was yeah. the, our whole life. And then they finally were like, you know what? We probably should make this official. Right. Yeah, <laughs> she this, had a new this kid isn't and shit. Happening again. Like, <laughs> we're not getting back together. Let, <laughs> let's just let's stop playing games. Right? Yeah. Right. For sure. Um. So, yeah, that was maybe 15, 16 years ago. Um, yeah. I used to spend the night at your house all the time when you lived on Pleasant Ave. All the time. I was literally just telling Lindsay. It's so funny. I was just telling Lindsay this. Uh, I remember when we were kids, you fucking, you were, you're super into games. I, don't, I still am. Yeah, well, you're a big gamer. Love them. Um, actually, that's kind of I uh, part of how you learn how to do some of this shit, right? You're producing part, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah cause you clips and like streaming a little bit here. Yeah. There, so. so I remember you played the game Sims. On the computer. Oh my god, yeah. And you would put you would put that cheat code in Rosebud. where you where you Rosebud with all the uh, exclamation points and, and you, you'd put the dollars. No, no, you'd put the girl in the shower and then you would remove the shower and she'd be naked. <laughs> Isn't that weird? I don't I, that. I, you don't remember that? <laughs> no, I remember killing Sam. Oh I no, dude. Sims. I remember I will never forget it. Cause it was pro honestly, I was so little. I was, it was probably like the first naked girl I ever saw, but it was like a Sims cartoon, like like a no, Sims no, character. No nipples. It was probably a butt crack. Yeah. It it's like, like some now. titties and some and an ass, you know. And she's like sitting yep, there yep, pretending yep. to shower, but there was Just no like this. yeah, there was no shower there. The You're like check this water, out. Probably. Oh, dude, it's so funny. And she's like, you remember the weirdest stuff ever. I remember odd things, dude. I remember the first time Brianna said bitch to me. <laughs> I had when we still lived in Dowdsville. Yeah. So the, Caitlin That's was probably like. ever ago. <laughs> dude, I drove when I lived in Dowdsville. I'm seeing the house. Like, yeah. I can, I'm seeing. Oh, that's crazy. Photographic memory. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. But random shit. Random the house is a shithole like, now. I know. I, I I bring Erica over every once in a while. I'm oh like, Look at that. man, never mind. It's so oh, bad, shit. dude. I remember. Like, so like, obviously, I had a house in Dallasville for a little bit, and fucking dude, it was right around the corner from mm -hmm. my my house that I had. And when we would like take Cadence for walks and shit, we'd walk by it, and I'm like, that's where fucking Keith and Brianna were raised mm -hmm. for a little while. It had potential too. Like, it, it was, was nice was back then. One, two. Wh whoever took it over, man, fucking just let it go, dude. Yeah, it, that place was. It had potential. It was all oh, yeah, boarded it up. It's all boarded up. Shit. Yeah, know, that, that whole street went to shit. Like, yeah. there's like a crater right now in the middle of it. I'm like, crazy, what the fuck dude. This yeah. Place? Dalsha was getting rough, man. Do you see the the most recent bust? I did, dude. What was it? 10, 10 and a half ounces of meth? Uh, three hundred and forty-one grams. Oh wow! I don't know how many, how much. What is it? There's twenty-eight grams in an ounce. So do the math. So how many was it? Three hundred and forty-one. So two two eighty would be ten grams. So yeah, it was about fourteen grams, or fourteen ounces. Yeah, 14 dude. Ounces. Yeah, yeah, my so bad. I know that girl. I felt like I know the other dude. What was the name? Joe. Joe uh, Miller. Joe Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm, Super, yeah. There, but there's one. There's, there's so many of them. There's like three of them. There's a Joe Miller that lives in West Canada. That's what I'm thinking. And I, and I think that's Caleb Krenishan's. That's Jeff. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's I was. Jeff. That's who I was confused. He has a brother, Joe, though. I know he has a brother, but I don't I know. Think it's, I think his brother's yeah, named Joe, but I, it's name. not. Not the same guy. No, no, no. <laughs> Definitely not, not, one, not the not same one, guy. No, no. But that girl, I'm not going to say her name. I mean, if you look it up. It's, yeah. Time stamp it. We're saying it's fucking St. Patty's Day. Do your homework. <laughs> right. um, she was in one of my best friend's weddings. That's how, cl dude. This girl was. Yeah. This girl was affiliated. We'll say with the Mopar militia when we had that back in the day. She was around all the time. Oh wow, all the time. She hooked up with a couple oh, clo close, 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 close 
buddies of mine might be members of the show, if you know what I mean. Might be, okay. <laughs> might be. I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus here, but, you know, <laughs> they might be be on the show every now and then (laughs) isn't it crazy how fast people can switch though dude it's nuts and it's not it's just it ain't gonna happen to me and then yeah exactly one pipe later you know you're getting busted with 14 14 ounces ounces of meth meth. and dude didn't they have guns and no 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 guns no guns that was that kid in herkimer he had all those assault rifles that he made from a 3d printer that's right yeah two houses down from my dad yeah yeah it was uh (laughs) he looked like a crazy person he said he was going Oh, what the fuck did he say? I can't remember exactly he was going what they to said. Something like it was some racist, dude. Like, yeah, oh yeah, he fuck? was a bigot for sure. I think he was going to. I I don't know for sure, but two nights before, you know, Sam's right there. Mm-hmm. Somebody smashed their window out. Oh, it's probably him. That's what. I, <laughs> and cause just based on the shit they said when they like arrested him, what they found in there, like yeah. his notes. I was like, wow. I all those. <sighs> this dude was losing it, dude, like, and he's all hit, bugged out. And yeah, shit. this oh, area wow. has gotten so fucking crazy and like just to tie it all into what this episode is going to be about thank god we got out and we did could you imagine like luckily that that was one drug and i've done some really bad drugs but like that was the one drug that i would never willingly do i've never i think accidentally crack i never had any crack and meth are the two things i've never had any interest in doing Mm -mm. um I think I may have accidentally done math once. Possible. I can via somebody telling me it was Molly. That, yeah. And I looked at I did it and I'm like, whoa. I'm like, this is I'm not sure the taste is. I'm like, that is that. not. And then yeah. I go, I was like, hey, I'm like, let me see the bag. And then they show it to me and I'm like, buddy, this is not what you think it is. I'm like, these are shards, bro. I'm like, someone sold you ice. Yeah, for real, dude. Like, it literally looked like shards of glass in a bag. I mean, in their defense, and you know who it is. So, literally, crystal. Like, yeah. The first time I ever did it, it was a purple fucking rock. Yeah. Like, so you have done so, it. Oh yeah. Oh, I'll, see. No, no Molly. Not, oh, not, oh no, okay. Molly, I was. Molly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm no, talking yeah, about. Molly, yeah. 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 I'm saying, like, in their defense, like, right. There is Molly that is crystal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. And it was one I, of the I get that, but it was one of the first and only times I ever was supposed to do Molly because again, that was never a drug that I ever wanted to do for some reason because like once once i got into drugs like i found my i found my happy place i found the ones that i liked i didn't obviously i've tried most of them fair fair. (laughs) i've tried right there i've tried most of them um but i pretty much like yourself we found our our happy place in opiatesville i honestly opiates were my schneef and opiates in line I like Xanax. That was my right. Yeah, that, that was, was yours. Benzos in general. That, that was, was your. I, and then opiates were second in line, but yeah. So so let's get into that regardless. a little bit. You so your childhood was not. It was we. we wasn't had, bad, but it wasn't. It wasn't like a shine and rain. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So we pretty much. We were together a lot as kids. Mm-hmm. We were together all the fucking time. Oh yeah, I was with my dad well, every right. Every yeah, weekend. yeah. Right. We were so together, and then my and times. then we would just be together because our dads would get us together, mm-hmm. their brothers or whatever. Okay. Yeah, dude, these motherfuckers, two single men in their thirties, four kids between 30s, them. I think they were still late twenties. Maybe so we're, I'm about to be thirty three. Yeah, I'm be thirty two. And I think my dad just turned. My dad's gonna be fifty seven this year. And my dad's what? A couple years old. Two years or, or a year older? Two years older? Yeah, yeah. Is it two or one? I don't know. I can't remember. They're so they're all so right fucking right close. So say fifty seven. Just say fifty seven yeah. minus thirties, twenty seven. Yeah, all right. So, so late, late, they were twenty four. Yeah. Between twenty four and thirty. So these 30s, yeah. fucking guys would take their <laughs> their young kids, right? It's me, Keith. Brianna never went with us. It was because I saw the there's pictures. I'll, I'll send them to you. Put them in the link. I have a, I have a couple, too. Yeah. OK, yeah. Well, insert picture. Uh, so they were <laughs> our family is like known for finding caves. So there's a cave in Dodgeville called Schroeder's Pants Cave that our family found in the I think the 50s. And then researchers went there and then a, a, a college student ended up getting killed in there. And then they shut the cave down so you couldn't. 
explore it anymore. If you want to use the title term, spelunking. Our, we come from a long line of spelunkers. <laughs> spelunkers. Spelunkers. I forgot about that word. <laughs> We're spelunkers. <laughs> if you couldn't get any more fucking trash than that, go crawl around in a fucking hole in the wall. Literally. <laughs> Every chance to die. Yeah. Like, like, you want an adrenaline rush? Go crawl in a dark hole in the fucking oh, ground fuck. and, and see what you find. I don't think I'd bring my kid crawling Never. through any of these fucking Never. holes, dude. Like, it's like April, May, dude, the, the ground, the ground still thawing, wet, like, dude. Like, there's fucking... So, this the place that used to take us, and again, my memory is so crazy good. It's called Wart Gregor's Cave. I don't remember where... I'm hoping it's the same place I'm thinking about. Yeah, it's the only place we ever went. It's the only hell, place our dad. You have to crawl down this yeah, yeah. hole with the slippery you'd go, ass fucking yeah. rocks. You'd, got the you'd go through the woods. The yeah, the you'd go through yeah, the woods, yeah. and at the end of the cave, there was that water hole. Yes. And yes, then if you, it. I remember, I think it's the same day we're talking about. There was a group of college kids in there, and then you would jump in the jump hole. The you'd jump in the hole, and then there was a tunnel that would go from the cave, and then you you would literally go in the water, go under the water, and then you'd go into another cave underwater, and you have to have your hand up like this. We never did it. No, no. And you would chance. follow. You'd have to hold your breath. So you can feel the time. And you'd have to, yeah, because it would be pitch black. And then you'd have to follow your way, and it would open up into a lake. It was like a lake or a pond. I can't remember exactly. I'd have okay. to, I'll have okay. to ask my dad. Um, but yeah, Work Gregor's Cave, we were probably, I think, in the, like, you'll see the picture. I, there's no way I'm older than five, five or six. Wait, right around there. Have right. to be that Caitlin age. And yeah, was, and she was, oh, she oh was, okay, yeah. So she had to have been four. At least she was walking at most. Yeah, at most. four. So yeah, and then there's I'll the, find it right now. there's our dads taking us caving. Like I know you like on their phone. Oh, no, go ahead. Things. That that's that's fine. I don't care about that shit. It's just when fucking Nick's texting people and shit. It's annoying. Um, I love you, buddy. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I don't know if the audience is familiar with caving or not, but you literally just you you put a, a hard hat. <laughs> you put a hard hat on. <laughs> With a light or a, you got a separate flashlight and then you just go into these caves and you just like there were spots in this cave where you were crawling between two rocks and you would have to be on your <laughs> stomach and you were and we were kids and I thought dude, that, that I was going to get stuck. Drop down to yeah, it dude, it right. was fucking crazy that our dads would do this to us and they wonder why we're so nuts. R like, like who's like, taking their kids to do that shit? Like, hey, let's let's go explore this cave that I've been to a thousand times and watch you guys be scared for your lives as children. They're, and they're watching, just laughing the whole time. Like, the whole time, <laughs> taking pictures with old Polaroid fucking disposable cameras and shit. Oh, it's fucking hilarious, dude. I can't find it right now. I'll find it at some point. I'll, I got them. I, I got a, Yeah, I got a whole too. bunch of them. Amy sent me them the other day. She was cleaning out my dad's office at the warehouse and... uh She's like, oh, look what I found. And it's literally like seven pictures from an old disposable camera of me, you, Caitlin, and my brother, Kevin. No shot. Yeah. It was fucking hilarious. It's super random. Yeah, I, was, I always tell Eric about that place. I'm like, I want to go back. Like, I'd Fuck love that. to go there right now. I, no. <laughs> now, as an adult, I would I'm love not to going go in there. there. I would love to. I'm so scared. <laughs> I'd never bring my kid in there. I would be terrified, bro. I would bro. love to go in there. Fucking Rick would probably love it. He would definitely oh, he would do be. that shit with you. Dude, I'm a pussy Easily. now. I'm such a pussy. Like, I'm so scared of dying. Like, that's why I'm glad I don't do drugs anymore. I because jumped, me and Erica jumped out of an airplane. So yeah, like, you're I nuts. Never. I was like, oh boy, that was, Never that was in shit. a million Ooh. years are you going to catch me jumping out of a fucking airplane. It was so fun, though. Dude, I think I would get so... I think I would be so scared that I would either pass out in the air or have a heart attack from all the coke and drugs and shit that I've done. Which you're right up there with me and you live, so maybe I wouldn't. I'm just being over exaggerating, but like. I, I smoked like before I left the house, too. So. Oh, we were up Oh, you smoked weed? Yeah. Oh, fuck that. It was like dude. a two and a half hour wait, so I wasn't like high when oh, I got there. Oh, my God. But it, it calmed my nerves, but when I got up there, we were like 10, 11,000 feet in the air, and the hardest part was. Fuck that. Putting your foot out on the wing like this. With the door open, just door, going. Doors wide open. You got the dude strapped to your back. You got to put your foot out on a pedal like this, and then you have to jump out. They don't push you, and that's the hardest part. Once you're out, I mean, obviously, you, you don't have a choice. But. No, dude. No way. You know I am so. So everybody breaks my balls about this because, like, such an avid snowboarder, racing motocross, like dirt bikes and shit. I'll hit jumps on those. Yep. Like, throwing myself off a 70 foot jump on a snowboard mm -hmm. going 60 miles an hour flying through the air doesn't phase me heights cr i will cry 
<laughs> I'm not no kidding. Shot. Dude, we, we go to uh, Cane Mountain, and they got the old fireman tower that you can mm-hmm. climb, and you can see all the lakes and the Adirondacks yep. and shit. Cadence will run up to the top. Run. And I'm sitting there, stop, stop, you're going to die. Please. <laughs> oh, oh. And Lindsay's sitting there laughing her ass off, and I'm literally like... <laughs> Like my legs are quivering, You're shit in your pants, and I'm trying to walk up the stairs, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Oh, dude, I hate it. When did that start? My whole life, my whole life. I, my whole life, I've been deathly afraid of heights my entire life. I just, I thought you were always the lead jumping off the top deck. That doesn't top. bother me. I mean, that's. I mean, I guess that's only like 15 feet, but. Jumping it's off shit into high. water, it's, that does see, I have a weird thing, dude. Like, jumping off shit into water doesn't bother me. I guess. I jumped off Devil's Peak at, fuck, in, uh, at Moss Island, which I think is like, I don't, everybody says how, everybody's got a different fucking number. But if I had to guess, it's like 60 feet. Okay. Maybe more, maybe less, give a few feet. And then I also backflipped off of uh, Wintergreen Falls. And Kanjo I never jumped off when backflipped off it. Actually, no. didn't even backflip. Gainered off it. I did a front backflip. I went up there. We we smoked. Walked down the side in high school. Like yeah. chilled. But that was. I know what that a girl that died there when we were in high school going yeah. to the club and shit like that. What's yep. her face? I can't even remember. Her I don't remember her name, but I remember it happening. Seventeen years old. Like, yeah. Holy fuck! Like that scared the shit out of me. Like I'm not never me. jumping off that. I fucking like, walked right out there with all that rage and water between your legs, and I just shame. fucking hocked it, baby. Nope. No, Water like that, dude, that, shit, that scares the shit out of me. Terrifying, like, bro. I like the water, don't get me wrong, but it's like in streams like that, the undercurrent, like, I, oh. it's fucking spooky. It's so scary, dude. But we're getting off track here. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, we're just yeah. rambling, but yeah. My so, bad. no, dude, this is what the show is. I mean, I get yelled at all the time because I cut people off and I fucking talk too much. Okay, you're the producer of the show. Lindsay, get your ass in here. No. Yup, get in here. Come on. <laughs> you don't have to be on the show. Just come over here. You, I just said you don't have to be on the show. Just come over here, please. <laughs> so, in the most recent episode, check it out. OnlyFans model part one. Apparently, Lindsay got some feedback saying that I talked too much during that episode. Do you agree? <laughs> Why would you put me in the Because you're the producer. It's your... It, you're, it's <laughs> it just... It, I'm not going to say it's just as much your show as mine, but you make the show happen. I wouldn't so, want to say talk too much... But cutting off, <laughs> maybe I do it all the time. I know, I know. Cutting I do. off has gotten better. I'm trying, but you're fucking loud. I know. What do you want me to do? <laughs> no, I'm not saying you have to do anything. Well, just, no, because she says it all the time too. And then like, and I know I, it's not intentional. And it's just the that's how I am. Right, and I right, think right. even didn't she say it after the show? She's like, you're really loud. I think when we first met, she's like, whoa, like calm the fuck down, dude. I'm like, this is. And that's the I'm fucking part. chill. <laughs> Like I told you with that that episode, her voice and Betty's voice. Right, yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> he was telling like me this earlier. Way like this, it bounces a little bit when you guys are talking together like this. He talks, it goes. <laughs> it's like somebody's having a fucking heart attack. Their heart rate's like two hundred over three ten. Fucking just. Away from me. Feel like I was being too loud. Did I? Yeah. Oh, I thought I pushed it towards you. Cause so I just base it off of like, cause I like to hear the voices clear as day in my headphones. Otherwise, to me. I feel like it's not being picked up. I mean, I get that. That's how I, do I feel. feel. Like my voice isn't getting picked up, but I also, I know it is. See, because you edit these, I don't. Fair. So I Fair. feel like I have to be like this. Otherwise, I'm not going to get picked up and I need to be heard. God damn it. No, no, you, don't, you don't have to be like. <laughs> I could probably don't. just do this the whole episode and be fucking fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. not how it's going to be, folks. Sorry. And that's okay. That's, that's okay. You own it. And that's okay. Damn it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to, I'm, I'm working on cutting people off. I know I did that a lot in the first couple episodes. Like I fucking, we, somebody's telling stories and I'm just like, Rah! I think Rick was trying to talk and I'm just like, nope, not right now, baby. I'm talking. In your defense, he talks a lot too. But he just was saying. And he's louder than you. But he was just saying some of the <laughs> dumbest shit ever, dude. Like we're obviously this is a learning experience, like right, learning because right. that was the thing. Like you're talking to an audience that's not really there. Right. I'm barely looking at the camera. Like I'm. Well, you have to. I know. I keep looking back. You before. have to I'm address to them like, like they're there. But dude, we're staring at an iPhone 14 right now. 
<laughs> right, right. So, I mean, yeah, I and guess. there's two ring lights in our faces. Like, it's fucking weird as shit. Fair point. And the first three episodes that I did, I'd never been on camera. I'd never filmed. I've never done anything remotely close to this. I think the closest thing I ever did was fucking an insane cover in a fucking first grade talent <laughs> show. And I almost shit my pants because I was so terrified. I was so scared. Because <laughs> I, <laughs> I was I was the Justin part. So I was like the lead guy. Oh, my God. Yeah, everybody's got their eyes yeah, on Yeah, so you. I'm like, because like, I could do boy. I could do handsprings. I could do front yeah, handsprings. Yeah, yeah. And that's like what NSYNC was all about. They could do flips and shit. And I was the only kid that could do it. So like, and I had the best voice, apparently. I don't know. I was fucking six years old. And dude, my mom was like, I'm throwing up before the show. I was so fucking scared. Got vomit on the sweater. Oh, yeah. What a mom's spaghetti. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Dude, it was fucking terrible. Oh. Fuck, man. <clears throat> oh, fuck. I smoke too much. Uh, dude, haven't had a cigarette since December. I just I just got over a cold and I was smoking the whole time. Yeah. I was sick, so it's just you got to cut the bong out. That's, I, I know, I know. I made I, Lindsay I'm trying do to it. cut out smoking. I just gotta perfect edibles and oil. I don't want to. I don't want to smoke. I feel like I the just, oil is worse. I want I want to make like use Everclear, like extract with Everclear and use it like a yeah. Dropper. My brother blew himself up doing that. I'm not. Which one? <laughs> Sorry, either and, one. Right, no, yeah, no. Never, yeah, Cav did it. He lit his apart. You didn't. Did, you never I, heard about that? I didn't hear about that. This was a few years ago. <laughs> he was uh, trying the, to make tank like uh, tank tinctures. Tinctures, yeah. Because oh, he. Shit, I did not know he, that. Uh, so, his profession, we'll call it. He just had a bunch of it, and somebody taught him how to make dabs, and apparently he did it once, fine. Okay. But the second time he did it, he did he did it in the oven, with alcohol, and he. He didn't turn the heat off or something, or he had the burner on the stove. And when he took it out of the oven, he put it on the hot burner, and it it blew up. I could, yeah. It blew up, and then it caught half his apartment on fire. No, yeah, I yeah. Did not oh, know dude, that. he's got he. They're gone, but for a while he had, uh, and they didn't leave scars, which was wild. But he had like second degree burns on his face and shit. When did this from, happen? It, fuck, dude, it's. I, I'm going to say, I think Kate, was Kate alive for that or born? I hate saying alive. Oh, I thought it's you weird. meant like recently. Oh, okay. No, it's oh, been, okay. it was years ago, still, years and no, years yeah, ago. Okay. Yeah. I think when dad, when he first found out about dabs, he tried to make it. Okay. Okay. And they're so, so easy now. You just get like a press and you put it between the parchment paper and just like. But that's always down, been, but. I learned how to do that when I lived in California in 2010, but they obviously, oh, okay. they didn't that, have that yeah, on the yeah, East yeah, coast yeah, yet. Yeah. So it's so crazy how far behind on the times that the East coast were <sighs> for weed. When I came home from California, all the shit that I saw when I lived there, mm -hmm. and then I mailed myself all that weed and, and, and the seeds and everything when I was growing weed and shit back in the day. Um, yeah, dude, it was crazy. I had so many cool fucking pictures on that phone that I had when I lived out there, just like giant buds, dude, that were like this big around from like my fingertips to my elbow, oh my just like huge purple buds, dude, that my buddy's dad just had growing in his yard. <laughs> yeah. These tomato plants out back. Dude, he literally came in with a wicker basket and he's like, Antonio, he's like, here's your, here's your cut, do whatever you want with it. And I'm just like, this is a normal suburban family. <laughs> this is like a normal Mexican, yeah, it, like a know. normal Mexican suburban family. And the dad's just like, here you go, son. Here's your cut, buddy. I mean, I'm it, like, Jesus Christ. I, it's as socially acceptable as alcohol. But out there, I mean, especially why? then and now, forget it. Like, it's, it's so normal out there. Everywhere now. Everywhere, Even, like, yeah. Most places, like 90% of places are like, oh, it's just weird. Like, Yeah, it's fucking crazy. But anyway, sorry we went off on that again. little on, off yeah. that little tangent. That's going to happen from time to time. You got to realize that. These are podcasts. We're fucking shooting the shit. We obviously talk all the time, but it's usually about the show, and we don't hang out as much as we used to. Obviously, you have a family. I have a family. We got separate lives and shit now, so, you know, I think the last time I really got to hang out with you was Christmas. It was either Christmas or the family reunion. Probably, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure which one, but yeah, it was either. Those it are the only two. Yeah, them too, those sure. are the only two, so... Yeah, I mean, and this is this podcast is literally to reminisce about the history and the facts of my life and the people in my life and interesting things and everything else. But anyway, back to the addiction uh, part of the episode. Um, as you were saying, your drug of choice was Xanax back in the day, um, which 
if I if I am not mistaken, you were prescribed, right? Yes. So is that kind of how it started or did you know before you got them prescribed to you that that was what that was your favorite? Oh, I went I knew what I was doing when I went to get them prescribed. Okay. Okay. So I got you. I started taking them when I was in, in high school. I was 17. You know I've never taken one. Oh my god. I How wild is that? All the that fucking is wild. all the pills that I've eaten in my life. That's I've never fun. That's good though cuz they're uh, they're addicting. Like According to Nick, I took I I I I've taken one. But I don't. I think I was hammered, and I don't remember it, so it doesn't I feel count. Like one night I came up to Chris <laughs> Carney's house. I was. At, they lived down the hill. You guys were up there partying, and I came up. And I'm sure I probably I may have handed some out. I was generous. Yeah. I don't know who I gave them to. I don't know. I, dude, well, that, 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 maybe so that's many of those he's nights. About. I don't know who, who well, the fuck knows. They were everywhere. I don't want to throw him out of the bus, but he he had them. A lot of people that dude. I know exactly where he was getting them. He had like, them for some reason, and he said he gave me them or gave me okay, one or okay. something at one point in time. I think he said when we left the bar, like when we left the bar one night or at the bar. I can't fucking remember, dude. So many of those stories are a so blur. Right blur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned because the owner of the garage will be coming on. Uh, couple weeks a couple weeks yeah Yeah, she'll be on chris's mom ladies and gentlemen is going to be on the show so with my mom so that would be a a fucking interesting episode i can't wait for that oh man everybody everybody every person i've told that i'm like yeah i'm like moni we call her her name's simone and we call her moni so moni and my mom the tanimal the (laughs) tanimal the tanimal are coming on the show, that's baby. Funny. That's hilarious. And they're they're friends. They work together. They, oh, I didn't they're, know they work together. Oh, dude, they're, oh, my they God. work together, which is recent, but they've been good friends since me and Chris started hanging out. Once they met, they're like, oh, we're the same people. So, and we know all the same people and we run in the same circles. So we might as well just be friends now. I mean, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. I get it. They're like, both fucking crazy ass ladies. I don't think I've ever met Simone. Maybe once or twice. But I, I doubt it. I She's don't know. fucking awesome. I, I do have two moms. Obviously, I have a stepmom and a real mom. But I, I call her my second mom all the time. And she fully acknowledges it. She's like, yeah. She's like, this is my bastard child that I never wanted. <laughs> <laughs> never leaves my house. That's what she used to say all the time. That's funny. But yeah. Um, so Xanax. Yeah, never, never taken them, never got into them. I, I know everybody used to love them back in like the mid 2000s. I mean, everybody still loves them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, bad. Yeah, and they yeah, still, it's, it's, what blows my mind is they still give them out. Like they cut. Not as easily, but yes, they do give them out. Yeah. But 100%. They, you know how hard it is to get a fucking hydrocodone these days? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want a Zanny bar, mm-hmm. go to a therapist and tell them you're going to kill yourself. I say, here, take this thing. You're... <laughs> I mean, there's some therapist you can go to and tell them your fucking sink is leaking. Right. And say, here, take this Xanax. It'll, you'll forget about that. Yeah, exactly. You'll forget your sink is leaking. And Just your house is again. flooded, but right you're here, yeah. fucking... Fucking half asleep on the couch. Fucking, yeah, fucking all this zunchies around yeah. me that you were eating. You're waking up in a fucking flooded <laughs> fucking apartment. <laughs> yeah, so... I, yeah, like I said, I was 17. I was curious because of... That song Oxycontin, Xanax bars. Oh, Percocet, little white bars, baby. Little white, oh. yeah, little Xanax bars. I know what Oxycontin was. I used like, to. That was big. Like, Xanax bars. What the fuck is that? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I had. I'm not gonna say where I got them. Right. Yeah. Don't do that. I, I didn't buy them from anybody. <laughs> no. I, I. Regardless. Now anyway. a bunch of people listen to this, so they we gotta watch what we say. Or I have to anyway. <laughs> 0.25, so they're the smallest ones. And I'm like, oh, Xanax bar. I looked up like what milligram it was, and I. Yeah. Took. A Xanax bar for my first time. A I whole bar? Eight, no, I took 8.25s my first time. So two milligrams worth. Okay, but a whole bar, because I, I don't ever remember. So I've seen two them. Milligrams, yes. And they'd be, they'd, it was like what? It was a full bar and it'd be like four sections on a bar, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I never, I literally have never, never fucked with them. There's never, I think I can still tell you the imprint on a Hydro 10 though. M, M368 or something. 368, 350. Three, it's 362 or 368 or something like that, I believe. 
But <laughs> yeah, yeah. pill pill I er, well, you can you consistently look at the thing yeah. and then a Google fit pill identifier that was my go to pill White identifier pill thirty one side M on the yeah. other it'll give you every fucking <laughs> every pharmaceutical <laughs> manufacturer that makes it like the different and we didn't have to worry about fentanyl back then no if you got a pill that's so we're all over the fucking place uh but that's why I'm not proud of it but when I when heroin came around obviously i dabbled never shot up i'm scared of needles i would snort it but the reason why people that i were i was hanging out with at the time they were all they all went to needles and it scared the fuck out of me but like there was just always something that was like this dirty ass powder you don't know what you're getting i went right back to pills even though they were more expensive Mm -hmm. i was like i know what i'm getting i know what it is it's, but it's such a fucked up mentality to have. You're like, but it's, it's you're being right. safe, and you never, you were safe. You were safer. You knew you weren't gonna you die. You know what you're getting. You like. knew that was my fucking reasoning every time. Because the guy would be like, "Why don't you just keep doing?" I'm like, "Dude, because I don't know what this is. I don't know what we're getting. I don't right. know anything about it. At least this, I know what it is and what it's gonna do and how much I got to take." Exactly. And you, I'm, you know the dose. Like yeah. With the heroin, it's going to change every single time. Exactly. And so it's like, this batch is going to be strong as fuck. You can't do the same thing. Exactly. And I'm such a weird, uh, I'm such a weird addict that like the way that I do things is so fucking strange. Like my Suboxone doctor, when I met him and I explained my rituals and everything to him because I asked you all that shit, he looked at me and he's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> He's like, I see hundreds of patients a day. He's like, you. He's like, I don't even have words. He's like, you're just weird. <laughs> like, he looked at me. He's just, just like, weird. he's like, you're just fucking weird. Like, obviously, he didn't say it like <laughs> right, that, but right, right. he's literally just like, you're a fucking weirdo, dude. Like, because I wouldn't wake up in the morning and just start eating pills. So, all right, I'll go over my rituals and then you go over yours. So I wouldn't wake up in the morning and just start doing pills or snort a line of pills or anything like that. I'd wake up, I'd shower, do whatever I had to do for that day, go to work. All I was a rush. I worked in a restaurant. I was a chef at a restaurant. Worked the whole shift sober, and then that was my reward. Was at nine o'clock, I would fucking either <laughs> pop the pills that I had or go down in the basement with a plate and snort whatever line I had to do. Honestly, that's a, a good mentality. And I never, in a way, I right? Mean, yeah, it, and I never discipline. over, yeah, I never overdid it. I didn't have the discipline. See, like, I that never. Was my problem. I I knew five hydro tens would get me where I needed to be. So I never did any more than that. Oh, see, I know. I never. Well, one time I did. I did ten seven fives. <laughs> Oh my I took 10, 7. That's the most I ever did. Island on that is making my stomach. We were in the garage one night and there was a girl there because we used to just hang out. It was like a night after work. We all get up there and that's where we'd like smoke and watch movies and hang out and yada, yada, yada. Um, but there was a girl there because, you know, we'd have random people. You know, you remember, we just have random people coming in and out of that place all the time. Like we didn't know who was showing up. Wild and there was just show. some some girl there. I'm not going to say her name because she might listen. I don't know. But she watched me eat 10 seven fives one night, got so scared and goes, this kid's I mean, going to die. I get that. She's like, you're you're going to die. And everybody's like, nah, dude, it's beer egg. He's fine. He does this every day. And she's like, no, she's like, I'm not sticking around for this. She's like, I'm fucking leaving. Got her friend and left. <laughs> dude, I, I, I've been in a similar situation. It's wild. Similar situation, but with Xanax. So I had someone gave me, what was it? 110, 75 milligram Lyricos. I don't even know what that is. It's a nerve like medicine, like gabapentin. Oh, okay. It's a nerve pain medicine. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I've never tried this. So I took three of them and I, it made me very fucking drunk. Hated it. I was like, I got to get rid of these fucking things. Really? It was like a, like a, yes. I it's, like a, it's, a, it's like a nerve blocker. Yeah. So of. it just made, but it made you feel drunk? Yes. That's weird. Weirdly. I don't know if it was just like a side effect I had with it. I don't know. I never took them again, but yeah. I just took three of them. There was 75 milligram and I was just, the Meads had that clothing store on Main Street in Hurricane. I remember walking oh, in yeah, there. I was yeah. fucking walking in. I started fucking wobbling all over the place. I'm like, I not. Your equilibrium I, just like all off. Yes. Just like, like throws your whole thing. Like this big. One was this big. And I just could not walk straight. Yeah. It was bad. So <clears throat> this woman was like, 
She goes, oh, I love them things. She gave me 27 one milligram blue football Xanax for them all. Okay. Like, even trade. Give me them. Yeah. I took all of them in one night. On accident. How many? It was 27. But you were eating bars at the time, though. More or less, yeah. So, I was buying scripts of them. I was buying whole 90 scripts of them for 200 something dollars. Yeah, so we had... Oh, man, we had such hookups back in the day. And that's so what fucked fucking me, because someone's like, oh, I can get you a script of the bars. I'm like... Well, you hooked me up with my fucking script. And then that was... Because I got Xanax from that same person. Yeah, and so had, I had my well, my so like, okay. my Perk 10 script that I would come... So I would buy a script every month from the same person. And then when I moved to Vermont... I was literally coming home every two weeks when I got paid. I knew the date they got it, yep. and I would drive five and a half hours mm-hmm. to pick up that script and go all the way back the next day. But that's that's also the good thing. Like it was scripts we were buying. Yeah, like, we weren't. We're not buying it on the street. From yeah, yeah, some yeah. random fucking. We were people, buying like, legit shit back then. Like it wasn't. That was a thing. I always thought, like, uh, not speaking for you, but back to my weird rituals and habits and shit, like. I was so finicky about who I would deal with. I had like a small cl- like a small base of people that like I would buy shit from. It was you a lot. And I knew that if you were getting it for me, I would be straight. Like everything would be cool. Um, but yeah, I had uh, very few people that I would buy shit from. But never, never got sick. Never had to go through withdrawal. I was always smart about everything. Like I would time it out to the day. And if I had... Say I had like three days left of pills, mm-hmm. I would make sure I bought more with that three day overhang. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I think so. So that I never would run out. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know you what always I mean? had that. Buffer. I always had a buffer. Yep. Always. So that was see, I, that was my. I didn't have discipline like, and with Xanax, I never felt like they kicked in. I never felt high until three too day, late. Three <laughs> days later, when I wake up and I got a bunch of cool shit in my house, I'm like. <laughs> the what? fuck happened what does that mean i got a bunch of cool shit in my house just take shit i was a thief i'd steal shit from walmart <laughs> like i used to walk in walmart and fucking oh i'm gonna grab a 30 pack i'd walk up grab fucking two 30 packs of bud light and just walk out the store wake yeah. up i got fucking one's half gone the other one's there i'm like what the fuck yeah, like see and that's just, another thing because you you, you you don't have anxiety right nothing can touch you, you don't, you're not scared yeah like, there's no you're just uh, uh you don't give no, a you're, fuck, basically. No, yes, yes. No fucks given. And then when you add alcohol to it, it's... And that's what I wanted to say. Usually people that are pill addicts and shit, they're not drinkers. I still don't even like to... But we used to. I used to, yeah. I got two DWI. And I mean, I, yeah, yeah, and I never... <clears throat> I would drink on pills all the time. I drink on Suboxone. I mean... I'll drink on everything. When I, was I drink, Bali, yeah. I, I don't... I, like, I, I, alcohol just goes great with everything. And that's that's the big... That's the big A in our family is alcohol. Like I, so when I'm drinking, I, I, I love it. Liquor, oh, love it. liquor especially. Give love me some it. crack and some Southern comfort. You know, some I, what? Cracking. Oh, I you said give me some crack and some Southern comfort. No, I'm like, dude, <laughs> you just said you don't, you've never smoked crack. Like, now you're like, yeah, just give me that ball, baby, and, I, and no, some no, SoCo, no. and we're having ourselves a time. No, 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 crack and crack. <laughs> That's just rum. nasty. It's so good. Oh, I that hate Southern rum. Southern comfort, dude. It's so Ugh, both of those are just, whiskey. Just, I hate both whiskey. of them so much. Well, I, I like drinking liquor, but I don't. I'm a big fan. That's why I don't go out of my way. Yeah, I don't have, and I'm, I don't like the taste of beer. So you're not going to catch me. All you guys all call me gay. I don't care. Fuck all of you. I'm the gayest drinker in the world. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I drink. I'm the Bud Light. Walk in. What's his face? Dylan Mulvaney. Was it Bud Light limes, dude? It's, I don't think it could get any gayer if you I've wanted. I've never liked them. They're so good. <laughs> so like the flavored beer. So good, mm-hmm. dude. It's, it's so, too sweet. Ninety calories, too baby. Sweet. I don't give a fuck. There's. Calories. I don't even think. I, don't, I can't I, gain weight, so I can give it yeah. 300 fucking calories. Well, I've lost sure. 30 pounds, so I'm fucking happy since I switched beers, so. No shit. And yeah, I'm just, well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I'm also, I'm down a lot of weight, and uh, yeah, I mean, fuck it. I don't care. I'm on testosterone, too, so fuck all of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. I'm getting fucking ripped. Respect my authority. <laughs> Respect my authority. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this episode was going to get goofy. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I fucking knew it. I knew it. 
But yeah, dude, it, it, it's crazy though. Cause if you want to go down the line in the history of addiction in our family, so on my side, anyways, both my mom and my, and I mean, I know Papa listens, so I, I'm almost positive he does. I'm sure he does. And I don't want to throw shade on him because I love him more than anything. He's like the best dude in the fucking world. He's the greatest grandpa ever. The guy likes to have a beer. We'll just say that. I don't need to get into any of his fucking history or anything, but the guy likes to have a beer. Yes. And God rest his soul, my mom's father has passed, uh, but that motherfucker was a raging alcoholic. Raging. And, I, and not like... I mean, this motherfucker, I didn't see it firsthand, but I've heard stories. I mean, he used to beat my grandmother and beat my mom and her sister and her brother. And uh, let's go down the line. My mom's brother, God rest his soul, he's since passed uh, last couple years. Um, crazy bad alcoholic and drug addict. I mean, well, up until the day he died, he died. He got furloughed out of prison. Okay. Because they found that he had stage four brain cancer no at shit. 64. I think he was 64 when he died, or 65. Motherfucker was clean and sober for a few years, and then bath salts came onto the scene. Oh, my God. And never, somehow, I never did those either. Never me neither, either. thank God. No. But somehow, here, this guy had a mullet, or a rat tail mullet for 40 some odd years. Six three, jacked out of his mind. Mm -hmm. Talk like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> hey brother. Hey, how you doing, brother? That's like how he talked and tatted up, fucking just crazy fucking dude. My uncle Billy, and uh, yeah, fell off the wagon because of bath salts. I mean, crazy shit happened. I'm not gonna get into yeah, their story at all. Wild. I've seen that some fucking people down. yeah but yeah, then that then no joke kind of got sober again but then started was drinking and that was his kryptonite was booze and i'll never forget it left we have a huge party in my family it's, we call it the april party because we have numerous birthday part numerous birthdays in april so they just throw one banger for everybody there's like seven there. birthdays in april he lee and it's always it always uh i can't remember what the fuck was going on Maybe, it, no, it wasn't the April party. I'm sorry, I'm misspeaking because it was canal days in Little Falls. And this motherfucker gets hammered at my aunt's, gets in the car, and everybody's like, don't go, don't go. And the second he pulled out of the driveway, he went down towards Little Falls. And we knew it wasn't going to be good. And within an hour, he was arrested. And I mean, this guy's a multi felony, like multi felon, mm -hmm. like so many fucking felonies. So he got a DWI. They didn't release him, obviously. They put him right in jail, sentenced him to three years in prison. Um, and then yeah, was he said Marcy in a maximum security prison for a D for a DWI? It's repeat offenders, and it's probably crazy like if depending on the the situation yeah. if they considered it violent because yeah, Marcy's yeah. no fucking yeah. I don't remember what happened exactly, but yeah, fucking got arrested three years in prison, and then fucking not even halfway into his sentence or whatever, he literally. Got sick or whatever. Uh, he was having seizures from DTs and shit. Fell and hit his head, so they had to do a brain scan. Um, that's when they found the cancer. No shit. Stage four. Nobody knew. He didn't know. And then they fought and fought to get him out, and they finally got him out. But he never actually left because he was in the hospital and hospice and shit because he got so sick so quick. Right, right. And then it ended up dying from it. But, yeah, alcoholism nice. alcoholism's crazy in this family. It, it runs deep in our blood yep, yep. and it's a gen I, I believe it's a genetic disorder for sure um i mean as you guys see on the show i people probably want to say i'm a heavy drinker just because of how much i drink on the show but again i'm very disciplined so i don't drink sundays i don't drink mondays i don't drink tuesdays i don't drink wednesdays i don't have my first drink until thursday when i get out of work and then if i have my daughter if i'm home i'll have some beers if we're out and about doing stuff and I'm driving, no alcohol. If Lindsay's willing to drive, yes, I'll have some beers, whatever, no big deal. Um, but yeah, I'm very, because I don't want to turn into that. And it did for a minute for me when it's I lived. It's so easy. Yeah. When it's I, so easy to switch and you, you don't know when it's going to happen. It's right. Just, when I lived in Vermont, my second year, I kicked the pills. Mm -hmm. And what did I do? I substituted the booze for the pills. I um, that. I was a chef, so I had super easy access to alcohol. I wasn't 21 yet, but you know, 
I'm getting served at all the right, bars. Right, I'm right. fucking drinking every every day. I'm killing a twelve pack. I mean, you're it, at twenty twenty one anyway. You're yeah. around twenty one, twenty two year old. You're getting yeah. Like, like, at twenty years old, I'm drinking a twelve pack every day and a half a bottle of Jameson. It got so bad to the point where my last year in Vermont, it put me in the hospital twice. Um, because when you're hungover, your anxiety is crazy, mm-hmm. and for the amount that I was drinking, my hangovers were so bad that I didn't know anything about anxiety then. But what was happening was because I was in such a high stress level job, because mm-hmm. I was a sous chef at fucking 21 oh, years old, right, yeah, right, in charge of a multi million dollar restaurant, making menus, running the, the kitchen, stress. yeah, crazy, right? Uh, I passed out at work. I've done that. Got to work at 11 o'clock in the morning, ate a bunch of food, which was bad. And it did something to me where immediately went into a, a, they call it a panic induced uh, or no, a stress induced panic attack. And it was so bad that I passed out, had to go to the hospital for that. (laughs) My dumb ass. I was like, I'll just drink through it. (laughs) So I got, I I get it. I I got out of the hospital and Jesse fucking Jesse fucking he's got a beer waiting for me in the truck. (laughs) So I'm fucking pound. They gave me Ativan or whatever in the hospital through my IV. Is that what it's called? To like mellow me out. And I took my body was so dehydrated. I took two IV, two full bag IVs and like, I think it was like 10 to 15 minutes. No shit. So dehydrated. Yeah, so that was the first time, and the second time, I didn't pass out, but I threw a chair at an employee. <laughs> I, threw an, I threw a metal chair at an employee at the restaurant outside on the patio and thought I went into cardiac arrest because I was so worked up. No shit. And I fell on the ground into a snow pile, and Jesse had to bring me to the hospital to the emergency room, <laughs> and he's like, you got to stop doing this, you fucking pussy. Yeah. He's like, he just <laughs> called me a pussy the whole time. Come he, on, pussy. Yeah. He's, he's like, you got to stop right? fucking doing this. He's like, you're such a fucking bitch. He's like, who the fuck <laughs> does this shit? You're like having... Like heart attacks from drinking. Like, He's like, you're pussy. a fucking pussy, like a dude. Up, dude. Yeah. Like, what the well, fuck? We man? lived together, so <laughs> like, he was like my caretaker and vice versa. And he, That's hilarious. Yeah, he literally goes. <laughs> he just like call me a pussy all the time and shit. So again, I took a bunch of IVs in a short amount of time, and there's a beer waiting for the waiting for me in the cup holder in the Jeep for, for nice our forty cold, for our forty five minute drive home. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah dude. In Ten minutes. I'm fucking thirsty. Yeah. So when I got when I moved home from Vermont to be with uh, my daughter's mom, uh, I I I had put on sixty five pounds in a year. Damn. From the amount that I was drive stretch marks and shit from it on no my shit. sides. Yeah, it was bad. We got those pictures that you guys have seen in past episodes of me being fat. fat one, yeah, I got that all in right here. Those are from, uh, those are from drinking. That's I got so fat because I was drinking so much. Yeah, that'll that all the, the calories and beer do that. Yeah, and I was drinking PBR, which is Ugh. full strength, no low calorie bullshit. It was PBR and Jameson Ugh, or Tullamore Dew. I can't do Jameson either. I'm not and a fan of whiskey. When I when I was with Courtney or whatever, twelve pack a night. When I moved home, just getting blackout drunk by myself every day. And then somehow I just switched and went back to pills because I was home. It's, <laughs> it's the environment. Yeah. Like that people, if you don't leave your environment, that's like, you have to leave the environment you're on, more or less. Like that's, I had to cut so many people off. Oh to yeah. To get sober because. Yeah trying to get sober and having people come over with bags of pills they throw drop knock out their fucking three dilaudid eights and fucking opanas and yeah zanny bars and i'm like oh no yeah i don't want to take them right yeah you're I mean, jones I want, and i want to take them but i, I don't want to take them you're like, drooling you're like oh they're they're man it up. i'm like dude really like, like what the fuck thank you yeah <laughs> cool so i was like no nah, i just gotta get away from it all yeah that was the yeah, well, so the tougher parts more or less. That that's my story, and then you know I, I I'll I'll admit it. I got on the Suboxone program. Um, I did lie a little bit <laughs> when I first started doing it. I was only doing four milligrams, and then when they asked me, I was like, "Oh, I I take two fours a day," which in the grand scheme of things, eight milligrams of Suboxone a day 
is nothing. That's a normal dose anyway. Yeah, it's like nothing it. to people nowadays. They make 24 milligram films now. Yeah, I, which I is heard. when I first started, they those didn't exist. Mm-mm, it was just eights. eights. Yeah. 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 Now they make 24 milligram ones because people are so bad with this fentanyl and shit. And over the years, I've weaned myself down, and I'm on two milligrams a day. Good shit. But talking to doctors and shit like that, obviously, it's probably a big money thing and everything else. But they're like, you've been on it for so fucking long. They're like, we don't know. They're like, you could stop. But because you're so used to it, and it's such a part of who you are in your life, that like we don't know how you would react and your body would react to just like not having it anymore. I get that. And then that goes back to the testosterone. The last few months, I've been like super tired. You know, something's wrong when you're a 30 year old man. You're not waking up with a boner anymore. All right. You know what I mean? And like, you don't want to fuck. And like, it, shit was weird. And like, me and Lindsay were having problems. And I know I'm getting real personal or whatever, but I mean, this is the show. Um, I asked my doctor to test my levels and 30 years old, uh, your testosterone should be 300 it's between 350 to a thousand is how they test it so mm-hmm. it's a huge spread right okay mine was uh 329 when they first tested it and they're like no nah, we're not gonna put you on anything yet like it's this is it's not bad they said i'm like all right whatever they're like we'll test it again next month next month it goes down again they're like, nah, it's still not that low. It's still in the 300. So we're just going to keep an eye on it, see what happens. Next month again, I get tested. And now it's down to a two, I think 295 or 280 or something like that. So then I'm like, dude, put me on this shit. Right, right. Well, listen to this. So I was on it. I was on the T for the last three months. They, they test your blood every three months just to see how it's going. Fucker dropped fuck, another 40 points. So it was the lowest has ever been. It was down no to it was shit. down to two two thirty something, I think, or two fifty two fifty or two thirty. I can't remember. Oh. Lindsay remembers, but yeah, it just kept dropping. And it's just the years of drug abuse and yeah, and that. opiates. Nice. Opiates kills male testosterone or even females testosterone. It just kills it. No, I get that. That's... And because I've been on it for so long, it just has diminished my body. So now I'm on it pretty good so <laughs> no, I mean, that's, that's and if you motherfucker you gotta pay i mean yeah. there's nothing wrong with it you know? right i'm trying to better my life and that's if it, it's making me better that's all that should matter and if you guys want to talk shit do it in the comments but again like i've said i don't give a fuck what you have to say because this is my life and not yours and guess what when i'm fucking ripped because i'm fucking Roid it out. Cause it's don't D- be it's jealous. It's D-ball. It ain't testosterone. It's D-ball. Don't, don't <laughs> yeah, lie yeah. To, don't I'm not lie actually people, doing testosterone. I'm doing D-ball. fucking D-ball. <laughs> doing D-ball every other day and doing some push-ups in the living room, bro. Yeah. Yeah, it's right over here. Like, quit lying. <laughs> quit lying. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right. So we just went on my little rant. Now you can do yours because yours gets a little hairier in some situations than mine does. I had a couple pass outs and some panic attacks, but yours is a little more crazy. I don't know if you want to tell people about it, but I, I, it's your call. I don't even, it's your call. If you feel comfortable with it, go for it. If not, we don't have to. I don't even know where to start, honestly. Uh, start where you ran the car into the building. <laughs> Well, no, that well, that was like way past everything. Like that's in the middle. Like I thought that was like kind of toward. That was in high school, though, wasn't it? No, that was 2013. Was it? That was two, ten years. Wow, ago. It was my October fucking eighth, 2013. Jesus, yeah. my fucking time period's way off then. So, well, on that anyway. So I wasn't. I didn't do drugs that night. Like I, I, I didn't. I was working at McDonald's. I had gotten. No, it was before. Obviously, before I went to jail. But I was living with, oh my staying, God, I not I living, but jail. staying with, I went Cut to work, that. I worked, yeah, but regardless, I worked at, uh, Ellie McDonald's. I completely forgot about that. So <laughs> me and him were chilling all day, right? I, no, no, I did do, I did a couple lines of uh, Coke. <laughs> so it. it was worn oh, off wait. in a half an hour, so it doesn't count. But that's, <laughs> that's the least of my worries. <laughs> So it was that on top of uh, 100 proof Southern Comfort I was drinking. So I think I had a little more than a quarter of a bottle. Yeah. And then I went to work. 
from Jesus 4 p.m. Christ, till dude. 10, okay? So I'm working at McDonald's in Italy, and I'm fucking hammered back there, dude. Hammered. Trying my ass off to make burgers, dude, sweating all over everything, dude. I'm like fucking panicking, dude. I'm like, holy fuck. I, I had to have smelled. Like, it's liquor. They yeah. had to have smelled it on me, dude. I, and I'm just fucking did a couple lines, too, dude. I'm just fucking I'm panicking, right? So Tenant Cot comes on. They're like, all right, you can go home. I'm like, all right. So I grabbed... A burger and a, oh my god, a large Coke for a dollar. I'm, like, yeah. I'm about to go finish this bottle. I need some yeah, soda. yeah, mixer. Need mix. a mixer. I don't know how much more I drank. I there was this girl there. She needed to go meet somebody. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll bring her. <laughs> Volunteered and oh, he fuck threw me his keys. I mean, it's not idiot. all my fault. What an I mean, idiot! I did choose to drive, but he willingly gave me the keys. Yeah. So I remember bits and pieces of this part. I remember being at Man. Nice and Easy. I remember seeing uh, Robbie Height and his Robbie, girl. Robbie, shout out, Robbie buddy. His girl. You don't got to believe his name. Ran up to the car. I'm talking to them. I'm, they knew I was hammered. They're talking, they're, no, you're dumb. I'm like, I'm just. Fuck you. <laughs> and then I went through the McDonald's, my job, yep. drive through ordered food i'm sitting at the window to try to pay and get my food couldn't find my wallet panic and i'm like i don't know it's somewhere it's here looking, take it out of my check looking all over the car for my wallet go back to the house to look for my wallet there and then left again jesus at that point i don't remember anything after i left there because oh i still my had my mixed drink driving with me. i still had my mixed drink with me holy fuck bro driving dude boom 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 next thing you know i wake up and i got somebody's living room window sitting on the bottom of the windshield and I'm in Holy the building and I'm like fuck bro the windshield's cracked there's the airbags in my face there's dust everywhere I'm like what the fuck happened here I'm like start the car up put it in reverse backed out and it's fuck. not your car not even my car not your car backed up took off I'm like fuck about to whoop my ass <laughs> I said I'm <laughs> fucked that was what was on my mind I'm like oh my I was three blocks from his house <laughs> When you watch movies, right? You got there's got to be movies that you've seen where some old lady thinks she's putting it in reverse and she actually puts it in drive because she's old as fuck yes. and floors it and goes right through the fucking living room. Yep, yep. Imagine just sitting there eating popcorn with your family on a fucking Saturday night watching movies. And this fucking dumbass comes flying <laughs> through your fucking living room, <laughs> hammered drunk, just fucking. And then just takes off. Oh, where the fuck? How did I get here? Oh, I don't. Here? Time to go. Bye. <laughs> Didn't feel a thing. I no shit. My adrenaline was rushing. I'm hammered. Right? No shit. Back out, take off. I go up at Second Street, and I get to. What the was the car? What was, okay, so the airbags deployed, which I've had happen. Airbags deployed. The windshield had a big crack down the middle that I believe spider webbed off the side. The bumper was hanging off. Yeah, the fucking hood was dented up. Like I, it was. And you just decided you, you thought that nobody would notice, and you were just it was gonna go. Three o'clock in the morning. I was three blocks also, from his house. Thank God. I was. I, I was. I was like, I'm gonna make it. Like, I, I'm <laughs> it's gonna always make your it. thought when you're hammered and you're fucked up, and I'm you you did it. something <laughs> bad. You're like, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. I, I almost did. That's I how I thought did. when I got my DWI. But I, I didn't okay. drive through nobody's house. I went through the first. There was a stoplight. I said, I'm, I went right through the stoplight. The first one. I get up to the one by you know where Greenies is. Mm -hmm. I get to that light, and it, it's red. So I stop. I'm like, all right, fuck. Oh. I roll the window down. I start trying to roll the airbag up to get it out of my face, and I'm sitting there beeping the fucking horn. Cause Your I'm trying to heart get it has to be racing uh, so fast, dude. I was scared shitless, bro. Hell yeah. The light turned green. As soon as I take off, the cops come flying around the corner, <laughs> right? So I, get, I, I go through the light, and I barely get to not even all the way to the other side. They're right up on the end of the car, and I fucking pull over to the side of the road, whip the seatbelt off, and go like this in the car. <laughs> Just threw my hands up in the car. I'm like, yep, all right, well, you got me. My hands are up. They come over to the window. I roll it down probably like an Hold inch. On. We're not going to be able to cut that because that's a pivotal moment, but cut me yelling and shit. <laughs> <Gotcha>. <laughs> so anyway. So I, I, they, they, they I pull me, finally get pulled over, cracked the window down, like, oh, and they, they knew who I was. Like, yeah, like, of oh, course. Mr. Crane. They said, how much have you had to drink tonight? I said, oh, I said, maybe two beers. I said, not much. <laughs> they said, oh, two beers. I said, yeah. Like, all right, get out of the car. Open the door. I fell out. Yeah. <laughs> fell out of the car. Did you the drive car. this through somebody's house, sir? <laughs> they, they, no, they said, you, they said, oh, I, I don't. Like you hit a fucking pole. I said, I hit no fucking pole. Like, don't, don't lie to me, motherfucker. I, <laughs> I know what I did. I hit a pole. Oh, <laughs> fuck you. You liar. Babe, Bullshit. you missed it. 
You ever hear the story that Keith drove through somebody's house? No. <laughs> that that I'll put this on the I'll clip this into it, but that one picture I just showed you, that was my mugshot. That oh, yeah. Keith's mugshot. Insert here. Cheese. <laughs> Dude. He, I was, I got it, there. Is she sleeping? She's awake? Look at how happy he is. <laughs> He's happier than a pig and shit. <laughs> so, I, so I get there and they're like, oh, they're like, dude, they're like, how the fuck are you alive? Oh, what the fuck do you... you Point two three. Well, how the fuck are you walking right now? I said I'm more alive than all you cocksuckers out here. I'm talking shit. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I said I'm fucking. I feel great. I'm just blah, blah, blah. like, all right, let's 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 get this on the road. You know, let's take your picture. I'm like, like one two. I'm there. I went. Put my thumbs up. They start <laughs> dying. They're laughing. They're dead. They're, like, you can't fucking do that. This is gonna go on KTV, dude. What? You can't fucking do that. I'm like, all right. I'm like, whatever. So then the next time I just did that big fucking cheese, they laughed. Like, dude, we're putting this on the news. Like, everyone's gonna see this. I said, I don't give a fuck. Oh my god, dude. Brought me to the cell. I woke up in the morning and oh, it was CO. I can't remember the dude's name. Short little fat fuck with a little mustache. That's got to be, so when you come to the next morning, you got to just feel, not only are you so hungover probably, but like. I knew I fucked up. You I knew. Up in a jail cell, I'm like, and my head hurt. That shame, and you were in a car accident, so like. My body didn't hurt that day. Oh, it did? I was the next, I was The next hungover. day you didn't like, hurt at all? Motherfucker. I started to, but that next day I was more hungover than anything. Oh man, that's wild. But no, my body did not hurt that much. Like, for how hard I hit that building, it did not my body did not hurt that, that's that much crazy. i don't know how okay so fast forward what what were the charges so they found out you drove through somebody's house oh yeah so what happened what did you so i know i know I one of the charges of that too i'll put the picture of the whole i have that too on my yeah. computer if you got it the put it in too. i'm gonna put them both in there i got the um, that too. i don't remember 100 percent what you got charged with but the person you were living with didn't he report the car stolen no i thought that was one of the charges you got no, I my char I got uh, aggravated unlicensed operation a class E felony because it was like the fifth one I've got. Yeah, and then I got the class A or the A misdemeanor for DWI aggravated DWI, and that's it. Mm -hmm. No destruction of property, no nothing like they probably like do. We got him. his insurance took co the insurance covered it. Nice, and then he got rid of the car. He everything went shit after that, and he didn't drive right. Yeah, three yeah, years and yeah. <laughs> And he was He's not like, a saint either. He was just like, fuck it, dude. Like, he, I understand him getting pissed that I totaded this car. Like, yeah. that's on me. Well, I so, fucked up, but he gave me the keys. How, yeah, how I, much so, mad or how, how mad could he be? When I heard that that had happened, I also was told that he reported the car stolen. So you got... That I don't... I didn't get charged with a stolen. No, oh, I thought, property, I thought you I, did. Nope, nope. I got ju just the... The two, well, they gave you two DWIs. One was a DWI. The second one was an aggravated because it's over 0.18 or whatever. So they hit it twice and then they end up dropping one because, you know, yeah. like, however the fuck it works. It's so crazy how yeah, they do I, that uh, shit. Yeah, but. I just sat in Montgomery County. We call it Mount Hungry. That's where I got mine. Mount Hungry. I got mine in Montgomery County. I got it in Herkimer, but they shipped me out there. Oh, that's yeah. I didn't go to jail for mine. No, so they were an alien, but I got, they shipped me yeah. out there. They gave me. Cause I was sitting in there. I had it was a fifty thousand dollar bail. Oh yeah, see, not a five thousand dollar bond. So I'm like, fuck. And I sat in there from October, I think it was thirteenth until December twentieth. Jesus. Sat in Mount Hungry. Yeah. That's where Fat Kid went to jail. That's where all my friends go to jail. That place fucking sucked. I, uh, a bunch of my friends have gone to jail there. Luckily, believe it or not, Kept listeners. High in there. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. <laughs> Some dude, cause so it was a. Uh, a holding ground for federal prison. Right, yeah. Now Herkimer is, but Montgomery is a holding ground for whatever right. federal inmates. This dude came through from Syracuse and he had a bunch of pot on him. Big fucking time crypt. Big little, guys come through there. Little sticks, they would call them. Yeah. Basically, it's like... A pinner. A pinner, like, smaller than a pin. It's like four hits. So a couple of us gave up our breakfast cakes for like two days, like boom, boom, me too, him too, you too, and we all, four of us threw down, we got this fucking stick, right? And then we had this other dumb cocksucker Kenny I'll just I'm not gonna say his last name but Kenny. I can't believe that you did time I, I completely forgot about this this dude was so I don't know I, I say desperate for friends because he was just dumb yeah he took the tip of a pencil the lead yeah and a napkin stuck it through it and then started poking the fucking socket under the tv the the outlet right. to spark the lead to light the fucking oh okay to light the joint right Lit it on the other side of the fucking pod, walks across the lit joint out to the fucking 
little yeah you guys had it's like a little there. caged that, in that area stupid little cage yeah, yeah yeah had the camera up in the corner so we all stood under there yeah and then we'd one of us hit it hit it right like this underneath the camera and then walk around blowing it out and then pass it back to him hit it underneath the thing and then walk around everybody's watching us from the inside we go in dude cooked dude. high as hell high as a kite dude everybody's just staring at us i'm like dude holy fuck we're trying to play <laughs> poker and shit dude i'm like I mean, I'm, you haven't just, smoked I'm in how in long? Jail. I'm like, yeah. it's been fuck, like right. two and a half months, and no, dr- completely drug free, and then smoked a pinner in the fucking jail. In, like, in oh, jail, fuck. yeah, you're just in jail smoking weed. <laughs> this kid got, was getting not uh, sub strips in there. Oh uh, yeah, you, this I remember you telling me about. So we would, uh, he'd cut them up into little eight, sixteen. Then you put it on your pieces. So and then we had chapstick, oh. and you take the cap of the chapstick. Yeah, dude, this is where I drops. got this is where I got the idea from, and I tried it. Put a couple <laughs> drops of water in the the, the chapstick cap, and yeah. put the strip in it, and let it sit there. I remember Warm when you told me about this, dissolves, dude. And then you just sniff the water up, and you got dissolved so oxen right up in your nasal passage. Yeah, uh, that was the, one of the worst feelings too, because you're sitting there going, "Yeah, smelling an orange tree." Like, <laughs> I'll never forget what Your I, eyes are pinholes fucking. When you told me this shit, dude, I was like, what? And then I tried it and I was at work when I did it, it out in my trunk. <laughs> it burns. It, it burned like up. a motherfucker and it fucked me up. But like, again, the reason I loved opiates so much is because it basically did the effect of cocaine to Same. me. Same. Like most people, when they do opiates, they, they like... They don't want to do anything. They're tired. They're sleepy. They're not now. Yes, I would get that effect, but not until like hours after I've done it. But that initial high mm-hmm. for the first couple hours, I'm fucking, I could run a marathon. It was Percocet. Oxy. Hydro is not so much for me, but oh, Oxy. Any, Percocet, any. Oh goodness. I'm talking. Doing work. I'm fucking yeah. sweating. Fucking going any opiate. An any opiate I've ever done has Anything always done that. Week. Well, anything without the Tylenol, like the Roxy's, anything like that, that was too. Those wouldn't. Uh, they never affected me. I lo- they're just they were. Those things were good. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that's one. What about the other one? Well, the first DWI I was eighteen, and we were partying all night. It was New Year's two thousand. I don't fucking know. It had to have been two thousand nine because we just got out of high school. So yeah, two thousand nine. We're drinking out a bottle of E and J. E and J. Good mom, choice. My mom's Hyundai Santa Fe, and I'm drinking the whole bottle of E and J on the. I had Matt Jones, a whole fucking car, Gabe Albert, a whole yeah. fucking car. People, the crew, just baby, having a fucking blast. We're going party to party, dude. Just chilling, going up Barringer Road, Alien, dude. We were Fuck up at yeah. Bobby's house up there. Everybody started fighting, so obviously we were planned on sleeping somewhere up there. I wasn't planning on driving home. Right. Everybody started fighting, so I already got kicked out. Yeah. And it's fucking snowing, coming down so thick and heavy, oh. dude. There's a fucking inch or two on the road, and I'm up on Behringer. So I'm not like, a good place to be when it's snowing. And I'm going, dude. I'm white knuckling it. I'm just, and then the car just starts going, sliding sideways. Going, I start when I'm hitting the hill, it just starts, yeah, right into a fucking ditch. Bam! I'm like motherfucker. And then I tried just, and then I dumbly hit the gas and tried going straight out of it it was it was the suv i put it into sport mode whatever i'm like i, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Might, be, I, I might be, be all right this. yeah and i just it went down in and it, the fucking thing was sideways like this. i have a picture of that too so <laughs> fucking thing was sideways like this so i'm sitting there the, everybody's getting rides home i'm like oh, i can't like i'm stuck here like, i would have left it ain't your car it's, it was, i would have no but oh, it was your mom's, my mom's car. oh fuck i was gonna so, say if it was one of your buddies i would have ran i call especially back Erica. then I called my sister Erica. I said, I'm in a ditch on Behringer Road. I need a ride. I'm hammered. Get up here now. And she's like, I'll be right there. So I'm sitting there waiting. Everybody's already gone, right? Yeah. I see a car coming up and I notice it's, I see the lights on the phone. You can top. tell it's a cop. It's a cop. I'm like, fuck. So I, I jump in the back seat. I throw the keys on the passenger seat and I sit on the seat like this on the bottom. Like I was sleeping the whole time. And yeah. And the door, I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck happened? So I just try to play Try it to play it off. Here. Obviously, um, they're not. But my sister pulls right up behind him. Mother, you couldn't have been here three minutes earlier, Erica. Come three on, three minutes earlier. The cop was cool though. He, I did the, I had to do the, the, the whole breath line. They made the you whole. do that in a snowstorm. I'm sitting there freezing like this, dude. I had a fucking Aeropostel thermal on, dude, in jeans. I'm sitting there like this, freezing, Jesus. dude. I had to walk the line, dude. Touch my nose, re- do all that shit. I can't I, believe he made you do it. I did all that, and then I did the breathalyzer. He goes, dude. Yep. He goes, if it wasn't for the breathalyzer, he I would have let you I, go. He goes, you're not. He goes, you were good. He goes, you're not, you're not impaired. He goes, but I think it was a point one eight. 
So it was right on the aggravated part because I was drinking liquor. Yeah. But I was drinking a lot then, so I wasn't like... Ugh. Right, yeah, you could handle it. I could handle it then. I was like, I'm just... He waited an hour after we got back to the station. Let me piss. And then you do and the then big did one. The blood big one. Yeah, it yeah. Was a point, I think a point oh nine. Okay. So it was over the limit, but it wasn't aggravated. I was like, all right, motherfucker. And then they Y O'd it for me. the The judge got it Y O'd. I think I paid like a five hundred dollar fine, and then it or dropped it to a D W A I, and then Y O'd it, or however the fuck it was. Yeah. But it got dropped down, and then I thought I learned my lesson, and then I started partying and not giving a fuck, and was depressed, and just kept. Spiraling, spiraling, because Xanax made me not feel. Sad. Yeah, made me not feel sad. Yeah, more or less. So, um, all right, sorry about that, folks. We just uh had some technical difficulties there, but you know we're right back to where we were. Um, Keith was just wrapping up his story about his uh his first DWI and his experience with that, and uh, yeah, man, mine. I only have one. Uh, it's not as crazy as either of them. <laughs> it's a little bad, but I just didn't give a fuck. Uh, I yeah, I mean, so mine. I literally was at our one of our friends' uh, kids' first birthday parties. <laughs> I had just joined a motorcycle club, so I thought I was hot shit. I rode my Harley everywhere, had my fucking cut on and shit. I was a prospect. Wasn't even a full patch member yet. Uh, was at this kid's birthday party. It was at Scheffler's kids first birthday party out in Fort Plain and we'd work together at Target and uh that's how we became good friends or whatever obviously we'd known each other forever but we spent a lot of time together I don't know dude I was there all day so who the fuck knows how many beers I had right you know I was just, I was just drinking like and me and Courtney just just split up we were still living together and everything so they were going down easier so it was just you know it was one of those days and I left it's like the sun was just going down and I'm on my Harley and I used to wear my cut when it was nice out with no shirt on underneath it. Cause it was a vest like, a, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm on five S and four plane going into St. Johnsville. I'm doing 105. God damn. I'm doing 105 and I see a trooper and I just blow by him. And usually when you're on a motorcycle and you're going that fast, they don't even bat an eyelash. Especially when you're that close to town, they'll just keep going. They're like, whatever. Like, if he dies, he dies. That's his choice. Yeah. <laughs> well, so come to find out later on down the road, the kid knows who I am. He didn't know at the time, but he was training a newbie. So there was two of them in the car, which I didn't know. And they flip the lights on. They turn around. They start chasing me. My dumb ass. I knew I'd been drinking. I'm like, you ain't catching me, motherfucker. Nope. So I start going on back roads to St. Johnsville, yep. well, which is hillbilly country, and yeah, it's real wooded there. shit. I had no idea where I was. I got away. I'm on a Harley. It's loud as fuck. Mm -hmm. It's dark out. Yeah, there, yeah. <laughs> it's dark out. I'm on a fucking back road. It's gravel. I got no fucking jacket on. I'm freezing. My lid that I used to wear, my helmet, had a chrome visor so i had to ride with the lid open so i could see okay and all this dust is blowing in my face and i'm on this road oh and I, I start slowing down or whatever and i'm like oh I, I i'm gone at this point it had been fuck probably five minutes since i'd seen a car behind me right right so i knew i at least i thought i was gone well these motherfuckers knew that area so well that they stopped in like a gully mm -hmm. and they could hear my bike echoing so they knew exactly what road I was on. And all of a sudden I'm slowing down because I'm, like I said, I'm on a gravel road and I'm taking this turn. So I slow down because I don't want to wipe out. And all of a sudden I see these LED lights coming up on my ass hot. Fucking hit those lights. And I'm just like, motherfucker. I pull over. They come up to me. They're like, get off the bike. Blah. They start screaming at me and shit. And I'm like, God damn it, dude. So I get off. I take my helmet off. They're like, why are you running from us? I'm like, I'm not running from you guys. I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, you didn't see us? And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about, officer. Just played it off as dumb as I possibly could. And they're like, you've been yeah, drinking? You got to try. They're like, have you been drinking? And I'm like, no. I'm like, why? They're like, all we can smell is alcohol. I was like, oh, I was just at a kid's birthday party. I had my helmet on the porch and somebody kicked over a beer and it leaked into my helmet. That's why I smell like booze. They're like, yeah, we're not buying that. They're like, uh, here's what's going to happen. 
they're like, you either do a sobriety test or we're going to arrest you for evading police, which is a felony. And we clocked you at 105 miles an hour, which is 55 miles an hour over the speed limit, which is also a felony. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, dude. Do the whole sobriety test. Perfect. Literally, I saw the dash cam footage. Mm-hmm. Perfect. There were no flaws at all. The no guy, perfections. The, literally the guy goes after I got done. He's like, all right. He's like, you're good. So I start walking over to my bike mm-hmm. and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, where are you going? I'm like, you literally just said that I'm good. He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, you're not. He's like, you got to blow into this first. I'm like, I ain't fucking doing that. He goes, you don't do this. He's like, we're arresting you. It's an automatic. He's like, it's an right automatic. Now. He's like, you don't have a choice. The one that they had wasn't like an old school one that told you on the spot what your blood, what your BMI or whatever the fuck it is, B- level, your BAC. B- BAC is. It was literally looked like a USB drive and it glue green if it was positive or red for negative. Oh, wow. Okay. That's all it was. So I blew into it, immediate green. So they're like, get in the back of the car. They're like, you're arrested, DWI, blah, blah, blah. I was like, are you fucking kidding me right now? I'm like, you literally just told me that I'd pass my sobriety test. I was in St. John's where they had to drive me all the way back to Fonda. No shit. Yeah, because it was a trooper. So they dropped, oh, they brought yeah, me back yeah, to the yeah, nearest yeah. trooper okay, barracks, and we were out that way. So it wasn't Herkimer. It was mm-hmm. Fonda. My bike got left on the side of the road. I'm like, don't impound it. I'm like, fucking leave it. I'm like, don't fucking touch it. I brought the keys with me. I had the president of my motorcycle club at the time come and get it. <laughs> like somebody's coming to come get it. Well, it. he don't he, touch my. He shit. literally he came and got my bike, and he fucking got me out of jail. Oh no shit! Okay. And then I'm, I literally get back. To, I'd have no idea what I was at, but how I knew, I'm like, we get back to the building. I took a piss. I'm handcuffed, and they're like, "All right, now you got to blow into this." They call it like old Betsy or something. It's like this giant fucking crazy looking machine from like the '90s. Like it was a breathalyzer machine, yeah, yeah, as yeah. old as fuck, and like it read out like a fax machine. It's, got like a, it's blue. Yeah, it's like yeah. weird lines and shit, and they read it off, dude. Point oh nine, one point above the legal limit, uh-huh. and they're like, dude, they're like, honestly, they're like, we didn't. If it wasn't for the smell, they're like, we didn't even know. Yeah. They're like, you you did so good. Like, we don't really get a lot of good like people that do sobriety tests and do it that good. They even put it in their cop notes when they wrote my tickets out because when I got my attorney, he was like, well, these assholes literally said how good you did on the fucking sobriety (laughs) test. Well, long story short, by the graces of God of the universe, because I, I, you know, I got friends in high places. It was not a normal DWI. I got it dropped so bad that literally I only ended up losing my license for er, for three weeks. Oh, wow. Had a conditional the entire time. See, I didn't. I didn't do none of that. I, I only paid. I paid seven hundred bucks to return retain the, yeah, my yeah, the retainer to fee. retain like my over, attorney, yeah. and then my fines were the minimum, minimum, minimum penalty, which I think total was I think twelve hundred bucks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I had to pay seven fifty alone to the DMV each one. Well, yeah, you had to do that. That was like a legal. That was a state thing. You had state to pay two fifty. Yeah, the fines. I don't remember what yeah, the fines were. I think but. mine was two fifty a year for three years. I had to pay it. I got out of the fines on the second one. Oh, really? I paid nothing because I did jail. I did jail. Oh, okay, yeah. So I there you go. Offset it more or less. So I was, as far as I know, I was supposed to be like on the hook for. A lot. Like restitution or something. I thought maybe yeah. something happened, but maybe the insurance ended up covering it, so I didn't have to. Or right. I don't know. Nobody told me the technicalities. But. Yeah. So we, I, if you want to tell the other story, that's up to you. I don't know if you want to. It's pretty personal, but. Well, at this point, I don't really care. So up until now, there's even, well, I don't know about now, but at that time, I had people convinced I had a seizure. Yeah. More or less. Well, I know what happened. Right. I know. People <laughs> close to me know what happened. Yeah, yeah, I know what happened. It was devastating. <laughs> it was very scary. It, that, honestly, that, that, that scared eyes. the fuck out of me, that too. That opened my eyes. Like. Well, we were pretty close for a lot of it because we were doing what we were doing together. Right. We were together a lot back then. I mean, I remember, for instance, before you even get into the story... Keith had this apartment 
an alien. The frat and house. We tried to have a party at my house and nobody showed up. And then I got a hold of you. And then you're like, oh, there's a whole bunch of people down here. So we take a car from that party down to your house and there's people everywhere. And fucking we walk in and we were there for fu- not even five minutes and it gets busted. Mm-hmm. I literally, a cop puts a breathalyzer in my face and goes, blow into this. And I just go, <laughs> and spit all in this motherfucker's face. And he got so mad at me. He goes, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. He was so, you remember that? He was so mad at me. I thought he was going to kill me. And then as I was leaving, I go, party's still going, baby. Bring it on up to my mom's. <laughs> and that was, I think that was like the first big party we ever had at my mom's house was because yours got busted. So and everybody just. make it up there because we got arrested. <laughs> we had to go down to the state. Yeah, and everybody got, like, came up to my house. Shit. <laughs> yeah, there was a hundred and. Yeah, it was wild. 118 people, something like that. Just a little over 100 people in that little that two bedroom, tiny apartment, ass apartment, upstairs apartment, hot as fuck. Oh man, it was crazy, dude. That's all that place was, and people that lived downstairs were deaf. Oh shit! So they didn't hear shit. They didn't know. <laughs> they didn't know what the fuck was How going on. They didn't come out of their house. Like, could that be? Dude? It was a frat house. It was the trap house. Like, yeah. That place was fun. Like a lot I, of fun. I miss that place. A lot not, of fun. I say miss, but there was. Good fucking times at that place. Fucking living in squalor, fucking oh, partying man, every day, I dude. Don't know. So it was much fun. So nice. But yeah, anyway. So obviously, I said I was getting bad for a while. I got curious, and everybody around us, like he said, was starting to turn to heroin and harder shit. And yeah. Everybody around me was doing it, and I see. It. I'm like, oh, you know, like I'm 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 doing Opana, like fucking tens, twenties, you know, like I'm. I'm right there. I'm like, what the fuck? So yeah, and for the listeners that don't fuck with drugs, basically, opiates are synthetic heroin, more or less. Yeah, it's basically, legal. Yeah, it's yeah. legal heroin. So if you're out there and you're prescribed painkillers, be careful. Be careful because you're essentially doing legal heroin, which is fucking crazy. If they could regulate heroin, heroin would be legal. Canada, baby. It's, they're I, figuring it I, out. I support it. If all they're, drugs, they're figuring it out. Decriminalize drugs and educate people and let them make a smart choice. Don't legalize it, but decriminalize it. Right, you yeah. Addicts like criminals and expect them to get better. Although, I don't know, man. The homeless thing's getting out of hand, but... That's not... That doesn't... People, I would turn to drugs if I was homeless. Yeah. That's an, Just that's to an make it deal issue. with a bull. That's, that's, a, that's a society issue. Yeah. Like that's, that's another that's episode. A, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's a whole different... <laughs> that's fucking, another episode. I have my feelings on that. That's a whole different, but anyway... <laughs> So I got curious and I got, I got a little bit of dope heroin, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I was sniffing it here and there, whatever. And I got a needle and my girl went to work and I'm like, oh, I'm like, fuck it. I'm like, only going to be a little bit. I said, not going to just not even less than what I would normally sniff. Like just uh, not even a normal, whatever. I don't remember nothing. I went right out. And you, boom. so you never shot up before, obviously. Nope. So you just wung it mm-hmm. just from watching just people? Watching people. Fuck, you got more balls than I do, baby. <laughs> just from watching Fuck people. Fuck that. Yeah. But I, it, it, I, didn't, it, I didn't get to experience the high. Right, I yeah. I got to experience nothing of it. I more or less died. Oh, like, no, you did die. It was a, she went to work at like 4, 4.30, and it was right after she left. She didn't yeah. get home until between 8 and 9, and I was purple on the floor with a dog bark and like... Yeah, he died. <clears throat> three three shots of Narcan to bring me back to life. Like, I was... He was dead. I, I died. And... Yep. I... That opened my eyes. And I more or less... I still tell myself I'm here for a reason. Yeah, for sure, dude. I'm not religious. I don't... I don't believe in God and the... The sense, sense that normal sense people do, like my dad. Religion. Like you don't do yes, it like no, my like, dad. Jesus is the Lord and Savior. Yeah. yeah. What about the other 110 religions? Right. Like, I, there's so many questions. I don't care if you believe. You know, that's your faith. Feel free. I just. Yeah. I, I'm not religious, but there's a, the universe. I believe energy, different shit like that. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Another, you got anyway, real but, hippie after that. <laughs> not, that well, that changed my my dude. My I'm not. On I'm shit. just fucking. No, I because I, I know. Like I did. I did. Like I, I, I did. I'm not gonna. If that I that fucked me up. Uh, it was that was kind of like me and you. We weren't really hanging out a lot back then. I, I don't even think I lived around here when it happened. What year was it? Uh, it was a long time ago. Fourteen. Yeah, yeah. Twenty fifteen. Okay, so, so 10, I ten years ago did live around here. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Kind of in the end of right. 2014, probably. Yeah. Early 2015. But yeah, I mean, I obviously at that time I was with my kid's mother and shit, and I wasn't really fucking with anything. But it definitely uh, it it fucked with me pretty pretty bad. I mean, I, I, I can. It's understandable. We were fucking. We partied together for so many years, dude. And like at at some point, because of our lineage and our genetics and shit, you just get to a point where like you think. I mean, you can do whatever. You, you can do whatever. whatever. You're untouchable. And at that yeah. point, like I said, I was taking 31 fucking Xanax. Yeah. Like, falling asleep. Like my my buddy is that the night I took them, I'm, I woke up. I was at my went to my took a bunch whatever. Thought I left them at my house so I wouldn't take them all. And then must have went back took them. Yeah. Don't remember because you black out. Right. And then I woke up at my buddy's house on his bed. I woke up. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. And they're both sitting there like looking at me like. Thought you were dead. Like I thought I was dead. And yeah. Like, Dude, we they literally were about to call nine one one. I woke up out of dead sleep. I'm like, yo. Open up the bottle and snip the last two. They're like, dude, you got to go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's fair. Like, it, it, I, I, that's fair, but when that's, you, that's how bad it gets. When like, you I get hope. into it and it's in your family and, and you see, like, the older people in your life still alive from their partying days and you're in it, you don't you don't see, like, what's actually happening. No. You no. really don't. Mm-hmm. You just think that you're untouchable and that, like, you can just keep going and keep going and keep going. And luckily... I don't know what happened. Like, obviously, people in the comments or whatever, I still drink. You don't really drink anymore. You're, you're pretty, I mean, minus weed, you, you're straight and narrow uh, yeah. for the most part. I, some mushrooms. So, some yeah. Shit, right, yeah, yeah. He's a real nothing, hippie now, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing, like, nothing hard. <laughs> yeah, nothing, yeah. Like, addicting. We're like, both, we're both. Addicting I'm, in the sense of the word. I mean, weed's a very addicting. Yeah. Regardless. I don't know. I haven't smoked weed in fuck 20 it's, nah it's 20 addicting. years everything's addicting we're humans it's our nature you know? yeah but we're, we're apes that like shiny things now you guys got a sense of uh into our family and how we are and why we are the way that we are a little bit and uh yeah man if you're struggling with addiction and and you're in in the the thralls of the fucking life dude it, it, we feel for you it sucks but you got to get to that point where it's like you got to choose life over fucking over everything. You have, if, you have to want it. You like, have to not, really want it. It's never going to go away and it's always going to be a, a fight. And there, the there, people. There's days I wake up and I'm like, or I'll get real stressed out. I'm like, fuck, like a, a Xanax would fix this. Right. And then I have to like, oh shit, no, like, it, it, you can't do that, dummy. Like, yeah. You, you know what's going to happen. Exactly. And in that instance right there, that's why I would say addiction is a disease. Mm. I have different feelings that, about that's that. That's fair. Not, not the I don't, parts of it. Like, I think, yes, it's a choice. Yes, you cho- you're choosing to use it, but up to a certain point. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. W- once you get to a certain point, you. I think you're that, choosing to buy it, but you you don't have a choice. See, you know I think it is. I think the beginning of it is not a disease. No. I think what you're saying is you get to a certain point where it's so bad your body needs your it. body needs it where it turns a into chemical, a, a chemical, chemical dependency. Yes, your body. It's a then it turns change. into it a disease. It, yeah, it changes like, your shit. whole being. Yes, for sure. And like I said, I can a, get better. I mean, we're we're examples. You can get better. So. But. The urge is never for me. I mean, there's still, like I said, I get stressed out times and I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, well, so I'm on, I'm on a Band-Aid though. I'm on Suboxone. It's I'm a, on a weed. Yeah. I, I was like, well, I'm done with Xanax and I haven't stopped smoking weed since. That right. Was, I replaced one with the other two. So exactly. I mean, but Suboxone, people talk mad shit about it. Yeah. No. Mad, mad shit about it. People talk shit But like, I'm living understand. proof that you can be, you can take it, live a normal life. You can be a functioning member of society. I mean, nobody, unless you're a close friend of mine or a family member, nobody knows I'm on it. Right. Right. I've kept it a secret for so many years. Right. And even when it, even when I was taking more of it, it doesn't fuck me up to the point of noticeability. You can't, you can't tell. Start like licking your own belly. Right. Yeah, exactly. You could never tell. Like my parents didn't know for years, years they didn't know i went to california in 2009 before i moved there with my dad on a business trip and i was scared to bring pills with me because i was on a plane and i'd never done it so i left all my pills at home Mm -hmm. and it was the worst three days of my life it was fun but i I got dope sick for sure i think that's the one and only time i ever got sick but it was 
purposely. I did it to myself he, because right, I didn't right. want to go to jail for smuggling pills on a plane. I'd rather be sick. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather be I was sick. Also, <laughs> I was also 17 years old. Yeah, you don't want that charge. So my mom was home. And she was doing my laundry because I live, I was 17, I live with my mom. But I had a fucking bag of pills in my drawer, in my sock drawer, the size of a softball. Uh, and she was putting my fucking socks away. And she called me, and I'm in California with my dad, and she's screaming at me, What the fuck is this? Oh my God. Like crying, screaming the whole night. And I'm like, I literally flipped out. I'm like, don't fucking touch them. I'm like, those are, they're not mine. I'm, my buddy, I made up this whole yeah, dumb yeah, lie. I'm, yeah. like, but if, I'm like, if you fuck with those, I'm going to get fucked and they're going to kick my ass and blah, blah, blah. Well, they were mine. Right, right, and I right, knew when right. I came home, I was going to want them and need them. 100%. <laughs> I mean, Tammy, you're, I don't, you're a godsend, I guess, because you didn't touch them. <laughs> you fucking <laughs> left I mean, them there. Not my business. Um, uh, I mean, Whatever, who, whatever you got to say, say it, I guess, but out there, but you know, she fucking, it was 2009. She didn't fucking know, you know, I lied to her. She knew I was running with some bad people at the time. She didn't fucking know what and the hell, she didn't the same. want her baby it's boy to get her, get his ass kicked for, you know, her dumping some pills down the toilet, you know? Right, right. right. Um, but yeah, dude, uh, I think when you're dealt with this card, the, the the genetic makeup that we have it's it's inevitable sometimes i think especially thin line to walk yeah especially like dude i think the first time i had a beer i was like nine <laughs> you know what i mean i was nine years old the first time i ever tasted alcohol I don't remember all those. and then the first time i ever got drunk i think i was like 12 i was 14 mr boston's fucking a bo- i drank an entire bottle of malibu rum Mixed with Mountain Dew. I don't mind it. I just, I don't like coconut. But mixed with Mountain Dew? Yeah, that's disgusting. I was at my, my aunt and uncle still break my balls about it to this day because it was at their house. I was with their young, I was with their son. Mm -hmm. I was with my cousin Adam and uh, I thought I was so cool partying with him and all of his friends and shit. And I got so hammered and I was, I mean, it's Malibu, right, ladies right. and gentlemen. Like, you can only drink so <laughs> much of it. It's too sweet. Yeah, oh, dude, I literally, I fell asleep in that bathroom because I was puking so goddamn mm-hmm. much. And my aunt and uncle still fucking break my balls about it because they're just like this little fucker drinking Mountain Dew and Malibu <laughs> at my house. They didn't know. They they had went in and went to bed, so they had no idea. Right, right. And then I went to, they woke up and found me in their bathroom with a bottle of Malibu Mountain Dew next to me. And my aunt, she's like, you're not fucking sleeping over at my house for a long time. And she held her word. I wasn't allowed to sleep over till I was probably about 16. She said, no. But at that point, I was bringing my own booze to their party. So they were just like, all right, I guess he can handle it. So, And we were drinking when we were 16. So what the fuck? He ain't driving. He brought his own booze. We didn't buy it. He's he's handling it maturely. Right, right, right. It's so weird because, like, booze is such a bad, bad thing. And it's so weird that it's so like so, like sociably acceptable in and the because world of how because dumb it makes you yeah it's so crazy. But how long have we been going for, buddy? We've been we've been rocking and rolling for a minute now. Nine forty-five. So almost fucking two hours. Almost two hours, I'd say. Yeah, we started a little after eight. Right you want to shut her down? My ass is killing me, and I got a piece gotta so piece. fucking yeah. bad. Yeah. All right. So we're going to shut this down. We're definitely going to have Keith back on the episode or back on the podcast. I mean, thank you so much, buddy. Of course, of course. A I fucking blast. I love, I love you so much. I'm so glad that when I started this show, when, so I was, I, you guys will see in the early episodes, I was like, Shh, if you're a producer, sh- uh, hit me up and blah, blah. Little did I know that my cousin who my own flesh and blood, who I've been tight with my entire life could do all this shit. And as you guys see is phenomenal at it. I mean, I have a friend who produces a podcast out in California. Shout out, Carrick. I love you. Uh, he's complimenting this motherfucker left and right, saying how great, appreciate the, that. how great the audio is and the video. And, I mean, you're doing such a phenomenal job. And I just want to say how much I love and appreciate you 
for doing this because let's be honest dude it's a lot of work you're doing it for free you're basically doing it out of the love of the show and for me because we're family which i completely appreciate of course i enjoyed doing um, it like i yeah i like fucking with sounds like i even back in the day i had yeah, this three, motherfucker three makes beats on his own on his own, own time little, like loops and shit <laughs> so i'm like you know what fuck it I'm, for for those of you that don't know keith and for those of you who do keith thinks he's eminem i no. he named his son marshall if that tells you anything <laughs> i did i did i did but i don't think i'm eminem. when well oh, you do because when we were kids he had the blonde hair with the baggy white t-shirt who, who and the big pants who didn't have blonde hair in 2000 <laughs> when hi my name is came out or the real slim shady with everybody you know do your homework ladies and gentlemen because there's a video of keith Rapping with his long ass fucking Godzilla, haggard Godzilla. ass hair. I don't even know what it is. Godzilla. <laughs> it's such a fast rap, but he spits every word perfectly. It's like, apparently, it's impressive. I, I don't know because I'm not I don't listen to rap I mean I do kind of but like I'm not as into it as most people are but like he's fucking amazing and he's great so uh on that note we love you guys like subscribe uh check out this week's episode or no just check out the podcast guys we love the support subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh we love you peace peace